Hey, it's Kyle Zachary. How are your holidays? Are they good? Welcome back to Just the Facts. This is season two. We get a lot of questions on Just the Facts, but the one question that we get the most is how do I become a peacekeeper? So today, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can become a peacekeeper. Your first stop on the road to becoming a peacekeeper is the call for applications, a job posting. You submit your application with your CV and a letter of intent. You're going to have to line up a couple of character references. A hiring committee is formed and that hiring committee will select the best candidates to move forward to the next process. What's the next process you ask? Well, that's the interview. They'll interview you using a mix of questions that could range anywhere from scenario-based questions to your operational knowledge of the peacekeepers. The best way to prepare for an interview, read that job description, get to know the position, because they're going to ask you about it. And if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, how are you going to get hired to do that job? Right? After the interview, you'll have a computer literacy test along with a, a computer typing test. Now then, You've completed your interview and you've shown the hiring committee what a wizard you are on the keyboard and how computer literate you are. What's the next step? That's psychological testing. Now this test is long. It takes a few hours to complete it. And basically they see if you're mentally fit to be able to police the community. There's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of stress that goes into this job and they need to be sure that you can handle that. Next, you're gonna go for a physical. Now, the reason why you go for a physical is because the training you're about to go on is very intense. And if you aren't able to physically complete it, then we're wasting all of our time. The PAIR test. PAIR, P-A-R-E, stands for Physical Abilities Requirement Evaluation. Basically what it is, is it's a obstacle course and you have to run said obstacle course in a certain amount of time. I'll walk you through the pair test right now because it's pretty intense. So the pair run breaks down like this. There is a cone that marks your starting point and hang a quick right around the first cone. Then there is a five foot gap. You have to jump, there's a little mat that's five feet long. You have to jump that mat. If you touch the mat, they penalize you with uh, seconds on your time. Then you do a quick left around the cone and then you go up the stairs, down the stairs, around the cone at the end of the stairs. Then you have to go back up and down the stairs. Uh, you can skip stairs, but you can't skip all the stairs. So you can't get up to the top of the stairs and then jump down the rest of the way. I tried it. They told me, nope. After the stairs, you will take a right turn and then there'll be another cone that you have to do a quick left turn around, followed by two knee-high barriers. You have to jump over those barriers, little hurdles. If you knock down the hurdle, that adds more seconds to your time. After that, you hang a quick right around another cone and then there is a three foot barrier and you have to do a controlled fall there. That means you have to land on your feet and control yourself down your stomach or on your back and it alternates each lap. So the first lap is down on your stomach, second lap is down on your back. After you've completed your six laps of the course, then you have to move immediately to the push-pull machine. The push-pull machine looks like this. That arm at the top rotates at 180 degrees. Your task is to push on the handles on the top of the arm. Push it all the way to lift up the, the weight that's within the machine. So you lift the 70 pounds and then you have to walk the arm the full 180 degrees six times. After that, you do two controlled falls. One to your stomach, one to your back. Then you rise and you grab the pull portion of the machine and you repeat the same process. And that completes the time portion of the pair run. So the course, the running course and the push-pull machine have to be completed in five minutes and 30 seconds. Once your timed portion of the pair is complete, then you move on to a walk and carry test. So you're going to carry an 80 pound bag and you have to walk 50 feet. You walk out and you walk back, 50 feet total. Next, you're going to have a criminal background check. And the reason why we do this, it's quite obvious. Uh, you can't be a police officer and have a criminal record. They're two different worlds and they don't mix together. 
So after all of that, if you're still in the running, then you're able to go. You're gonna go to the police academy. You're gonna go to the RCMP training depot division in Regina, Saskatchewan for six months. You're gonna eat, sleep, live, breathe, policing. After your six months that depot is over, then you graduate and you're officially a police officer. Now you're ready to come back to Gunawage to begin serving as a peacekeeper. But first you have to go through another six month training period, this time with a field training officer, just to make sure you're ready. It's on the job training. We're gonna talk to a couple of our youngest members of our peacekeeper family and they're gonna give you a brief glimpse into what it was like to be paired with a field training officer. I did enjoy it. You learn a lot of uh, different people's ways of doing things. You learn uh, ways people even interact with people. It just helps you out on the job. And you also have someone to talk to while in the car. It's, it's a nice experience. Uh, we learn a lot of the community policing aspect with the field training in, in Gunawaga. When you're away at training, you're in a safer environment. Actually, you're in a 100% safe environment. So you can make mistakes, you can make as many mistakes as you want, safely. It's a different story when you're actually boots on the ground. When you're with your field trainer, that safety is still there, but the safety is your backup. You don't have uh, safe zones or you can have uh, plastic guns pointed at you. It's the real deal, it's the real world. Mistakes do happen. You learn from them, and that's what your field trainers are there for. He picks you up when you're down. He teaches you the right way to do things, and that's what uh, that's that's how I was guided into the job. So those are the steps. There are many of them, and they're not necessarily in the order that I gave them to you, but at least you know what you're getting into before you even sign up. So if you think that you got what it takes to be one of Ganawage's finest, next round of applications. I hope to see your name in there, and I'm looking forward to working with you. Thanks for watching Just the Facts. If you got a question, submit it to our Facebook page. We'll talk to you next week. Stay safe, Konawage. Yawagoa.